bin Saleh Bukhari, the group CEO of Al Faris International Group, to enlighten us on this subject. Thank you very much for a, a warm welcome, and good morning again to everyone. So you see me again. So that's why I didn't care about that. You know, the time was elapsing to, into my session because I'm still speaking. Um, okay. This is not going to be a, your typical keynote where I'm just talking behind the podium, you know, and boring you with a lot of jargons and stuff like that. I like it to be somewhat, you know, interactive and, you know, for us to, to, to have a, you know, a discussion rather than, you know, just me saying. It's just like sharing information and sharing knowledge. Um, so, how many of you have heard of IOB? You heard of, so, two, three, top. Who has heard of IoT? Everyone, right? IOB is the next level of IoT. So Internet of Things and Internet of Behaviors. But before we touch on that, do you know these two gentlemen? We, I touched on, on Alan Turing. I guess a lot of us have heard about Alan Turing. Have you seen the movie Imitation Game? A lot of you must have seen the movie Imitation Game. It's all about Alan Turing. Um, and, and you could see there, he was born in 1912 and passed away in 1954. He only lived for 41 years, but he is the forefather, and he is the father of artificial intelligence and modern day computing, where he was able to actually create the first real computer that is able to do uh, more than just simple uh, add additions and subtractions and stuff like that. Um, but then, does anyone know who who's Joseph Weizenbaum is? I'm pretty sure nobody knows that, okay? We all should know this person, equally as important as Alan Turing. Believe it or not, in 1966, he created Eliza. Do you know what Eliza is? It's the first chatbot, 1966, the very first chatbot, where he was able to create a software, and it was in the university that he was at, and he was at MIT. He was a German-American uh, scientist, one of the greatest ever. And uh, in that um, uh, software, he was able to mimic a psychologist. So he would ask questions to the students, and the students would answer, and then he would build on those questions and, and answer again. So it was a chatbot. It was the very first chatbot that we ever seen. And as, as I said uh, in my previous uh, discussion, why, I mean, if it was created in 1966, and we saw the cars in, you know, that were created in 1966, and we can see the cars today. Why are they different? Because in manufacturing, it's completely different. We have a lot of things that you can do, accelerate, but with technologies, we're, we're bound and capped at the computational power. So the hardware, the software, the, the computational power was not there. So that's why we just, you know, it took us so long to evolve from that time and, until what, you know, what we can see today. Now, um, we talked about uh, AI a lot, uh, you know, in, in the previous session. But this is the, the evolution of, of uh, you know, uh, of AI. Um, we're talking about computational power again. You know, the GPUs and other stuff which which exists today. And then the neural networks, where the actually the software was able to mimic the, the behavior of, of of how our brains work and 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 how the interactive. Um, uh, I would say dialogue between uh, machines and other parts of the machine. And then the massive data sets. Uh, and that's what I said. Once you have the data, you have the computation power, you can do a lot. But it's, it's like, you know, if, if we have a sample here, do we really represent the whole world? If, if I would take an analysis survey and I would say, okay, 90% of the people here like AI, but does that really represent the whole world? So, because the data set is so small, you cannot, I mean, with almost eight billion people living on, on, on Earth, you cannot take such a small sample and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna build on it. 
And this is my issue with AI in general, or in any, any kind of analytics. That we, you know, we take a small sample and say, oh, by the way, this is it. And then you see another research that says, oh, no, 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 it's that, it's this. By the way, none of the researches are wrong. It's really about the data set and, and what method did we use to analyze and create something useful or not useful or some, something like that. Look at the medical world. How many items do we see, did we see? And I'll take eggs for an example. When I grew up, everyone was saying, Eggs are bad for you. They're like, you know, they, they increase your cholesterol, all this and that. Guess what, what, what the doctors are, and, and dietitians are saying? It's important that you have at least an egg in the morning or a, an egg in your meal because of the good fatty acids and, you know, other stuff. So which is right? Which it, no, it's, it, nothing is absolute. Nothing is abs absolute because eggs can be bad for a person and eggs can be good for another person. So we cannot always say it's always good or always bad. It's really what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, so this is also what I touched upon, like, you know, with, um, with reactive uh, machines, like Deep Blue, when, when it was created by uh, IBM, it was able to, uh, to do the first mimic of human behavior. So you know, or like, you know, to, to think, actually not human behavior, to think and to be able to interact with another person or another uh, machine. Um, and then limited memory machines, it's, it's like what I talked about again, it's, it's, it's the uh, autonomous driving or the self-driving where you need to be aware of, of the surroundings. And these aren't that existing. Uh, and then the theory of mind and the the self-awareness is, is, the, is the thing that I talked about, which is, the, the one that is coming in the future. According to some researchers, again, they say we need about 30 years or so to reach that level. I hope we don't. Okay, so, enough about all of that, and because I want to talk about IOB and Internet of, of Behaviors. If you look at that, AI, we know what that is, right? Artificial intelligence. What's ML? Machine learning. Next. Big data analytics, we know that. Cloud computing, IoT, Internet of Things, mobile apps and wearables, then AR and VR, augmented reality and virtual reality. What's the difference between the two? Can you, anyone tell me what's the difference between uh, augmented reality and virtual reality? you know, teach a pilot, you know, to, to fly a, a multi-million dollar uh, plane. First, it's the life of the pilot that, you know, if he crashes, he or she would crash, or and plus the, the, you know, the cost, or in military and other stuff. Um, okay, then uh, we've got robotics automation systems. We talked about anything repetitive can be automated. Then collecting data from individuals and groups, so, um, uh, when I take a person, I, I analyze their behavior, then or we, we see the group, and we can, we can here I will touch on the, <coughs> sorry, the, the monkey experiment. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it, and, but I'll, I'll just say for the sake of context, where um, scientists brought in four monkeys into a room, and they put um, bananas in, 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 in the, like uh, somewhere up, up in, the, in the ceiling, so the monkeys, uh, and they give them like a, like a ladder, so they're able to go and, and, and reach the, uh, uh, the bananas. But every time they reach the bananas, the sprinkler system would, would spray them with water, and they don't like water, they hate water. So they tried it once and twice, and then they stopped. 
uh, they learned, right? They learned that, you know, this is bad. I, mean, I can't touch the bananas because every time I touch the bananas, it's gonna spray me with water. So what the scientists did then, they took one of the monkeys out and brought in a fresh monkey, a new monkey that didn't know about the situation. The first thing, his instinct, he went straight for the, for the bananas. What did the other monkeys do? They beat him up because they don't want to be sprayed with water. So th they stopped him. So, okay, then what they did is they took another uh, uh, one from the original monkeys and brought in an, a fresh monkey. The fresh monkey, the first thing that he did is, by instinct, going to get the bananas. What happened? The other monkeys he beat him up, including the new one, which didn't know why he was doing that. He just, he knew that this is the behavior of everyone, so he did that. They repeated that until none of the original monkeys were there in the room. And they actually turned off the slinker system. And no monkey was, was, ever went to, to, to touch a banana. That just tells you how we're bound by our thoughts. And because we always said we should revisit our, our assumptions. Your assumption, I, I do not believe any idea or assumption is incorrect. It's always correct. At that particular moment, at that particular circumstance. Because if, if I absolutely say that, you know, this is good, this is bad, there's no absolutes. So this is what we mean by, you know, take all of this, mesh it together, and then you have IOB, which is the internet of behaviors, which means we look at the behavior of mankind and the behavior of systems that interact with, 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 with humans to be able to do something. So like what? We talk about performance and, and ta taxi drivers. I mean, it's just one example. So in, in performance, so many things. Can, can someone tell me, with this background, can someone tell me what, I mean, how can we use IoT to, to improve the behavior of, of taxi drivers? So, actually what is being done today, part of it is, has a lot to do with IoT, where you, know, you put trackers on, on, on the taxis themselves, so you know how fast the taxi was going, how many times it stopped, so you can track its locations, all of that. That is great. So then you can say, oh yeah, that taxi driver, he did good or bad, right? But what about the interactions that happened inside the car? How good was he? How bad was he? Was he smelly? Was he, I don't know what, did he eat while he was driving? Did, did, that, if you do not have cameras or dash cams to, to, to you know, to uh, pick that behavior, you wouldn't know. So what happens is that you start looking at all of this data, and then I can do the performance um, assessment of, of my employees or whatever you know, industry you're in. So let's take, again, the, the taxi driver for example. How many times did he actually get frustrated? And then we look at the situation. What made that person uh, get frustrated? Was it justifiable? Was it not? Uh, how many times did his temperature uh, elevate? How many times did he touch the, 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 the AC? Or, you know, whether he did or not. So all of that, it just gives you a lot of data for you to analyze and say, okay, that means taxi drivers who drive between 12 and 2 are always subject to X, Y, Z. So it's not just about, you know, the driving itself, but it's really the surrounding as well. Um, medical. So, I, I think a lot of you will th would start thinking, yeah, yeah, this can be used in the medical, uh, in, in the medical world. Like, you know, in, the, in advanced diagnostics. Why do I have to wait for a patient to actually um, suffer a heart attack or suffer from a, a major illness, you know, and, and then start treating them? While you know, we can do a lot in, in terms of preventive medicine and diagnostics. So all of that, again, if you think about it, and I think, you know, you start to, you know, put things together. And, and I can you know, see that a person who's uh, 50 years old, he's 120 kilograms, and he's, he's I don't know, 175 uh, centimeters tall, and his or her behavior is of a certain thing, you know that they're, 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 they're eluding or they're, they're coming into something. So then you can do that predictive you know, uh, analysis and to make sure that you know, they don't but again, sometimes they, they are congenital, or like you were born with them. So again, you look at that, you look at that behavior with that condition, so that we can customize per individual in the medical for, uh, field. Because again, 
when, when you go to a doctor, you say, ah, you're sneezing, da, 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 you must have a cold. But guess what? Sneezing is caused by at least 100 other uh, illnesses. So it, it may not be a simple cold. And that's what happens today. A lot of people die in the hospitals or because of misdiagnosis, because it wasn't properly done. Because we do not have, as humans, sometimes we don't have the patience or the time because of how pressing time is. I just want to see as many patients as, as, as possible as a doctor. So, you know, we'll just, you know, just most probably 75% he or she is suffering from that. Guess what? A lot of people die because of that, because of the misdiagnosis. But if we use the internet of behavior with all the surroundings of it, we can do a lot here and we can, you know, save a lot of lives in, in, in that sense. Then law enforcement and um, uh, again, human behavior. In law enforcement, we can, we can use that and I, I truly believe that's where you know, the, the, the best implementation now happened. And we can see this uh, at, at, you know, when, when the corona happened in, in China and how they were able to control 1.4 billion people in such a beautiful way because they used the IoT and the IOB. Because you know, with, with military uh, or in the military world, I have access to all the cameras in the, in the streets or you know, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, in even in, in your homes or whatever it is. And there, there's something that I want to talk about, which is the you know data privacy and other stuff. But let's take it at, at that level now. So if I'm able to, like let's say now in this room, if I'm able to measure the, the temperature of, of every single person here and the minute that the temperature elevates in a single person, that person then either can be uh, ill, so, or starting to become ill, or because they get excited because they're about to do something bad and you know, they start to, to, so all of that, with a lot of data, a lot of human behavior data, that is relevant to the, to the society. Again, I cannot just say generalize and say, oh, in the US they did this, in Germany they did this, or India did this, or in Saudi they did that. I cannot generalize. Natural temperature, my normal temperature is as, as 36.1. Does that mean I'm ill or not? No, that's just that's how God created me. I'm always at 36.1. Other people at, at 37 or at, at, you know, or something like that. But you know, there's a range of normal. That's why when you go to, to a doctor or something like that, and when you do your analysis, that's why there's a range. There's a minimum and there's a maximum. And again, sometimes, by the way, you are beyond minimum or maximum and you're still normal, 100%. They just, you were just created that way. So it doesn't mean that you know, you're wrong. So again, back to law enforcement. A lot is being done, so you can, you can study the behavior of, of humans. You can, you can, because you know, sometimes you play on the psychology as well. So in warfare and other stuff, you could use psychology, a lot of things. You know, this society is most, I don't know, superstitious about something. You will do that, you know, you, you, you tr propagate that. So then, you know, you know that, you know, there will be kind of, you know, subject to that. So, you know, there's so many applications there. But here comes the, uh, the point where, you know, it, it's really, really tricky, uh, which is the um, uh, data privacy and the, and, and the human invasion of privacy. I mean, so would you, would you agree that somebody is monitor, monitoring you 24 by seven, that is looking at everything that you do? Most of us would say, no, I don't want. But why? Can you want to tell me why? Why you don't want to be monitored? Okay. You said it, but I'm I'm turning it. By the way, it is the most used in in insurance actually to to help you better, not because they don't want they want to deny you. And I'll tell you. In insurance, their, their, um, their objective is not to deny you, by the way, a treatment. Their objective is to deny you unnecessary treatment. Meaning, when I go to a doctor and the doctor says, yalla, x-ray, yalla, MRI. And then the insurance says, no, because he didn't give me enough reason. Oh, the guy came with a, with a headache and, you know, and, or, or a sore knee. Yeah, you know, he, he gives them, you know, straight away an x-ray. No, but if you actually have that predictive analysis, no, I, I know because you, 
because you had an accident or because you know you, you suffered from a fall or something, yes, then yes, I will immediately do that. By the way, it, it is very much, you, you're, I mean, you're right in, in the sense of how you're thinking. However, we turned it into something positive where we actually are helping people with, the, with such a thing. Of course, it's all in, in the novice stage. I mean, it's still in the beginning, but this is the, the, the idea. Absolutely, but for how long? For how long will you will you not behave normally? If I'm always constantly watching you. <coughs> exactly. So, in the beginning, and I said, this is the whole human nature. We get excited about change. With we want to experience change. We we don't like change at the same time from the, our status quo. I'm happy here. I don't want to be there. So it, it, it really you know, requires someone to push me you know, all the way to go there to, you know, to oh God, you know, that's an even better place than, than, than where I was. But you, you're absolutely right. We don't want to be observed because first, we don't feel comfortable, but if it becomes the norm, then it becomes comfortable, right? But again, um, what if hacking happens? Then what happens? If somebody has access to that data, that's the that's a scary part, right? If, if somebody gets, you know, instead of, you know, a, a legitimate company that is observing my health status and everything, someone else gets that and starts to know, oh, oh, I am allergic to some weird substance that they can just, you know, immediately inject or put in my food or something like that. You know, they can, you, can see, you can see targeted, you know, and that's what we can see in movies, by the way, today. A lot of things that we saw in movies back in the, I would say the 70s and the 80s, we can see them happening today. The same thing that happened in the 90s, they're happening or soon to happen. And you can see that that's why we call them sci-fi, science fiction, right? Because it's based on a scientific theory, but it's fiction because it's not real. Just like, again, um, if, you, if you take a movie like, again, um, you know, the dinosaurs, uh, Jurassic Park. If you think about it, because you know the, the writer of, of Jurassic Park is Michael Crichton. And Michael Crichton is a scientist, right? Then, and then became a writer. So because of his science background, he thought of, oh, what if I found, you know, a preserved uh, gene of, of a uh, you know of a prehistoric animal, and I was able to take that gene and inject it into another you know similar um, you know being? Will I be able to create that? Yeah, I mean, it's way far fetched. Because we know in technology today we don't have that, but you know who knows what what we can do, you know, in, in, in the future. So these things happen over time, and whatever was fiction is realistic. I mean, if you go to a person again back in the in the fifties, even if you go to Alan Turing and uh, in, 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 in the in the fifties, and you would tell him we'll have um, a device that will you know be able to do what it does today, which is our phone, he would say you're mad. And he would be, you know, the greatest scientist maybe ever, uh, you know, because he's, he's the one who really made that computer happen, right? That computation power in, in, in the palm of your hand. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, um, how uh, we, are, we are different. We don't like to be observed. We don't like, you know, um, uh, at the same time, it, we have the right, you know, uh, to, to our own privacy. So. Who thinks this is good or bad? Can you, can you just, by show of hands, who thinks this is good? Exactly. Nothing is absolute. A gun is not bad or good. It depends on whose hand it is and what they're using it for. Absolutely, it's about the situation. I keep on repeating this over and over again. Nothing is absolute, yin yang. Good and bad, you know. So it really depends. If I'm a policeman and I'm carrying a weapon, it's really to to stop, right? You know, uh, uh, burglars or you know, uh, uh, whatever. I mean, bad people from from doing something. But at the same time, I can abuse that power and use it for my own benefit. And we could see a, a lot of you know bad cases of bad cops. But that doesn't make every single bad cop a bad cop, or every cop is a bad cop, right? The vast majority are good. 
but then one or two behave in a different way and they will start you know, judging the rest of them. Again, human nature. But if we really take the analysis and see how, out of, I don't know, how many million cops are around the world, how many that are really corrupt and really bad, you'll find it always as a small percentage. And that's, there, there comes the, the, the tolerance which is embedded in, in the IOB. How much is your tolerance? Meaning, for a program to, to work and that is 99% accurate, what would you consider that? A successful or a, or, or, or a failure? Extreme success, right? In the medical field, a doctor that is 99.999 accurate, is that good or bad? Extremely bad. Because look at the number of people, that means the, the, the number of people out of, out of let's say, four, 400,000 people that, that, that are seen, four are dying. Human life is precious. So not a single human should die because of misanalysis or misdiagnosis or something bad. It should be 100%. So that's the tolerance level that we should apply. So something can go up to 50% maybe. If it's 50% accurate, I'm happy with it. Something that is 7% accurate, that is excellent. So it really depends on the situation and the, and the context. So are guns good or bad? It really depends. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not in black and white. And with that, I thank you for your time and for listening uh, to me. And this is my uh, contact. If you would like to reach me in any way, there's, there's my phone, there's my email. I'm, I'm available. I'm available on uh, LinkedIn as well. Um, and you know, I'm at your uh, service, I would say. I believe in sharing of, of information. I, I truly believe in that. So you can reach me at any time. And I'll leave now the floor for some of the questions if you have any. Okay? Sure. The fear of unknown. unknown, of course. So, uh, I think one of the missing elements of this is that uh, there is a value chain element for this So uh, she's asking about the, the fear of unknown and the value chain of how do we really um, decide with, whether something is good or bad or on how to, how to approach it. It's exactly like what I said in, uh, throughout my, uh, my speech. It really depends on the situation and how it is and how sometimes, which is very difficult, we take a leap of faith, right? Because I know this company, so I'll tell you something. How many of you think that Microsoft is doing a great job? One, two, three. In general, I'm not saying about a specific product. Honestly, they do, they, they're doing a great job. I mean, all of us are using you know, all their products and services. Yes, we hate the, you know, uh, what happens sometimes, you know, the crashes or the, you know, when it hangs or something. But why do we hate it? Because we depend on it. Not because it's bad, it's really because it's good. It's just, I'm so frustrated because I, I don't want it you know, to stop working. Not because it's really bad, it's really because it's really, really good. It's helping me do a lot of things. And if, if I do a lot of things with it, and then when it breaks down, and, and, then, and it, if it breaks down and I'm, I'm, I don't care, that means it, I really didn't, didn't like that product to start with. So it really depends, again, you know, the value chain, it needs to be clearly decided by by the creator of that content to see how it works in, in, in a general environment. And again, it's, it's about the tolerance level, as I said. Like, in, in a computer, if, again, if, if, a, if a software by Microsoft that, is, that runs out of 365 days a year, if it breaks down five, five days, that's considerably a lot. But again, to us as humans, it's toler tolerable, right? But if it was used in the medical field or if it's used in the military field, no, <laughs> five days is way too much. 
Actually, we're talking about uptime of, in, in the cloud computing world, of no more 99.59s, but really at 100%. We're talking about 100% uptime, zero tolerance for downtime. Because I'll tell you, UAE is just like Saudi in, in terms of automation of like, you know, our, our government uh, services. Can you just imagine if a, if a government service is down that allows you to, to renew a passport or to, to do any, any of these services? You just go crazy. Because I'm traveling, you know, because I put in mind, I don't need to renew my passport months ahead. I only need to renew my passport just in time, right? But that just in time comes, and then the system is down. I go crazy. We cannot afford that downtime. And of course, that com I mean, comes to, to, the, to the mother of all things, which is the internet itself. We all remember the incident that happened where you know, a cable was, was broken in, in, in the middle of the sea and internet was halting and it was like you know, horrible. We all had a huge fright. We all were like, oh God, we're so dependent on the internet. What happens if it doesn't work? What if happens if, if it's not you know, functioning? So I'm happy from having a speed of 500 gigabits per second, even if I have 50, you know, at least I'm still surviving. So it's really, again, the relevance and you know, how, how things are, you know, are done. With that, I thank you uh, very much for, for, your, for your time and for listening uh, to me, and God bless you all.